I'm going to give a brief introduction to heat capacity. And so one way we can define heat capacity is it's a partial derivative of the enthalpy respect to temperature at constant pressure, that's Cp, and then partial derivative of internal energy respect to temperature at constant volume, which means, for example, we can calculate a change in enthalpy as the integral between two temperatures, heat capacity dt. Another way we can look at it is, is the energy you have to add to raise the temperature by one degree Kelvin for a mole of material. So if you took heat at it, divided by temperature change, and did that for one mole, then that would be a heat capacity, right? So units, joules per mole Kelvin. You also see specific heat use fairly often, and, and that's usually a heat capacity, heat per added, but it's per gram as opposed to so for liquids and solids, Cp, Cv are about the same thing. Constant pressure, constant volume, doesn't really matter very much for liquids and solids. For ideal gases, Cp is Cv plus the ideal gas constant. And for real gases, neither one of these are the case, and it depends on the gas. So something that's important you want to keep in mind is that Cp increases with temperature. This is something that means we have to do an integration here because Cp is a function of temperature. So let's get an example for carbon dioxide to make it a little clear how it changes with temperature. So for CO2 over large temperature range, you can see particularly this range between about 400 and maybe 1500 Kelvin, the heat capacity changes significantly. Well, the reason heat capacity is increasing is because we go to higher temperature in addition to putting energy into kinetic energy of molecules. Also, energy goes into rotational modes and vibrational modes. And this is the reason that it takes now more energy to raise temperature by one degree Kelvin. Heat capacity also, its magnitude varies a lot between molecules. And I just look at a few examples. So first, notice how heat capacity, for example, for ethane doubles between 300 and 800 Kelvin. Also notice that C6 heat capacity significantly higher than ethane, but C6 benzene, so it depends very much on the molecule, not just on the molecular weight as to how large the heat capacity is. So heat capacity covers a fairly large range of values. And normally we fit heat capacities to some polynomial a plus b times t plus c times t squared plus d times t cubed is a fairly common one another is additional term e over t squared where temperature is in kelvin and when you have a heat capacity equation like this typically it's only good over a certain range so it's possible for example that we're calculating delta h and we have to integrate heat capacity we might integrate from 500 to 1200 kelvin using one equation and then from 1200 to say 1800 kelvin we might use a different equation that fits that range better now when we have a mixture we can use the individual heat capacities of the components if it's ideal gases to do the change in enthalpy for the system. And for liquids, if the heat of mixing was zero, we could also use the individual heat capacities. So this, this is just a brief introduction. The important thing to appreciate is the strong dependence of heat capacity on temperature, and you have to make sure the equation you're using is applicable over the temperature range that you're interested in.